The first thing you want to do is remove all unnecessary parts of the turbo. Uh, while we're working on it, we obviously don't want uh, extra gizmos. The bolts come off pretty easily. Clevis disconnects. Getting these uh, coolant hoses off is really tricky. Uh, what I recommend is, is rotating them, like I'm doing with the pry bar. And when you rotate them, you can then slowly loosen it up and eventually you can uh, break them free. You'll notice all sorts of corrosion uh, on the seal and it's really in, uh, it, it seizes together quite easily. So once the turbo is fully disassembled, uh, we need to mark the position of the lever uh, in the closed position because when we install the new one, we won't, uh, we won't have any reference and we could accidentally weld it in the wrong place. Uh, so what I'm going to do is close the wastegate fully, like so, hold it closed, and I'm just going to put a mark on the turbo housing with a sharpie for now. And uh, just for good measure, I'm gonna use an engraver so that I don't lose the position later. Accuracy isn't particularly important for this step. The next thing we need to do is grind off the wastegate flapper lever, and that's gonna allow the wastegate flapper itself to separate from the lever. Uh, we're going to do that with an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Remember to wear hearing and eye protection for the step. So this is the old lever removed and the wastegate should just fall out. The next step of the project is to drill out uh, this pin that retains the bushing from being removed. Um, it's pretty difficult to drill. You'll need a high quality drill bit. Um, a hardware store, cheap drill is not going to do it. I recommend high speed steel. Uh, maybe with some kind of coating on it, something very good quality. Um, what I've done is I've clamped the turbo in my bench vise, and then I brought my drill press out into the garage. Uh, again, because this material is so hard, don't forget to use uh, some oil for lubricant. Um, here I'm just using gear oil, Doesn't, it's nothing fancy. So you can see that I've drilled all the way through and the pin is completely clear. A quick note about drill bits. While I was making this video, uh, I first went through three drill bits before uh, actually successfully completing the hole with this fourth drill. Um, these three drill bits are from the same set uh, purchased from littlemachineshop.com, uh, made in China. Uh, the set was about $30, so very inexpensive. Um, they're allegedly made of high-speed steel and black oxide coated, um, but after drilling, they, uh, they drilled extremely slowly, barely moved any material at all, um, and they, they wore themselves out quite quickly. The, the front cutting flutes are all damaged on these three, so they'll need to be sharpened before they can be used again. Uh, luckily, in my tool chest, I had this additional drill, um, also high-speed steel, uh, but it's got some kind of... Um, yeah, some kind of PVD titanium coating. I'm not certain what it is, uh, but this drill 
is just night and day higher quality than the other three. So uh, if you're considering this process, plan on investing in a really high quality drill bit, maybe cobalt, definitely made in the United States. Um, the cheap China drills aren't gonna work for this. Okay, so the next step is going to be to remove this bushing. Now, we have two options for how to do it. Um, in my opinion, one is significantly better than the other. Uh, the first option is to basically use a punch and drive it out uh, from the inside. You can tell that we don't have a whole lot of great uh, angles to punch it. It's not easy to do it. It is possible, um, but it's, it's not easy. It's high risk. Uh, if you mushroom this back end of the bushing, it's not going to come out well. The technique I recommend instead is the slide hammer technique. Um, so what I did is I bought a, about an $80 uh, slide hammer on Amazon, and I can post a link for that uh, on the video. It comes with this uh, standard pulling bushing, and what I did was I made a, a custom nut. Um, so this is a, a 7 16 14 thread. So I made a nut that also has a matching 7 16 thread on the inside, and the outside is uh, just a little bit smaller than the new bushing diameter. So uh, this, should, this should pull right out through the existing bore. Um, so basically, the idea is this guy goes in here, and then I can, uh, I can tighten it down like this, and then the, uh, the slide hammer thread attaches to here. Um, and then I can use the slide hammer to bang it out. Uh, again, I've, I've done it both ways. This way works far better, but the challenge is you have to spend $80 on a slide hammer and you have to make uh, this nut, which can be, which can be tricky. So let's uh, pull it out next. Okay, now I have the slide hammer attachment uh, screwed in. It's got the custom nut on the inside um, next we're going to pull it out. I'm going to just do it on the floor and uh, hold it with my foot. It should come out pretty easily. undamaged, just how we like it. The next step is to install the new bushing um, into, this, into this bore. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just hammer it in. It goes in uh, somewhat easily. You don't need a press. Um, I'm going to use a flat uh, tool here so that I don't damage the top surface, so that I don't damage the top surface of the bushing. Uh, if that were to happen, then the lever that rotates on here uh, might not operate as smoothly. So I'm just going to use this as kind of an alignment tool. I've also got a 2x4 under the turbo to help support it a little bit. going in a little bit crooked, so I need to correct it. It's not easy to hammer, but it's going. Okay, it's in. Now we can uh, test fit the new wastegate flapper. Ooh, looks nice. Significant upgrade from before. Next thing we need to do is pin the bushing in place. 
Uh, the way we'll do that is just with a run-of-the-mill nail. Um, this is just from Home Depot, really nothing special. Uh, but what's useful is it has a pointed tip. So uh, you can possibly see down in the hole, mm, no, probably not, uh, there's a groove. And so that, that pointed tip uh, is going to lock the bushing from sliding out. Um, so what I'll do is I'm gonna cut this nail to be the correct length um, so that it's basically flush with the steel housing here. Um, and then we're gonna weld it in place. Okay, the uh, next thing we're gonna do is weld this uh, pin in place. Um, first, gonna give it a little gentle tap to make sure it's pressing in on the bushing, just to get it seated. Very important, uh, after that tap, give a test fit. Make sure you didn't accidentally deform the bushing inwards. And then we're gonna weld the new nail in place. Uh, TIG or MIG will work for this. Uh, I'm using TIG because I'm more comfortable with it. The last step is to uh, weld this lever into place. So we're going to be using this uh, mark that we created earlier. So if you insert the new wastegate flapper in um, and push it all the way against uh, the seal so it's closed, we're going to be welding uh, this lever in place here. Um, this is a tricky task. It really requires like three or four hands. Um, some things to know are that you want to avoid grounding uh, on your weld through the turbo because then the arc is going to travel uh, through the bore. And when I did it my first time, uh, it actually like slightly welded and it was difficult to break loose. Uh, so if possible, ground on either your clevis or your uh, flapper itself from the inside. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure that this is pressed perfectly flat um, against the shoulder here, this inner shoulder. Um, the shoulder here is machined just a little bit longer than this. So as long as you're pushed flat, um, the two things will travel perfectly with no, no binding on the shaft. But uh, if you weld this in skewed like that, uh, you could imagine that the two things will, will bind. Um, okay, so now we will weld it. Uh, again, it's stainless steel. Uh, this fits pretty tight. You can probably get away with just a fusion weld. Uh, you probably don't need filler unless you really want to. Okay, it's tacked in place. Seems to move freely. And then uh, this seems to be correctly aligned as well.
That's it. She's done.